Picture a scene from 66 million years ago. A massive triceratops stands in the ancient forests of North America, its enormous skull gleaming under the sun. Suddenly, a towering T-Rex bursts from the undergrowth, jaws wide open, ready to finish the hunt. But instead of fleeing, the triceratops lowers its head and charges three razor-sharp horns aimed straight at the predator's belly. This isn't just imagination. Fossil evidence shows that these life or death battles truly happened and Triceratops was far from an easy kill. Deep gashes etched into ancient bone tell a story 66 million years in the making. And today, paleontologists are finally learning how to decode the clues left behind by these prehistoric battles. The most compelling evidence lies in museum collections across North America, where Triceratops skulls bear unmistakable scars from encounters with the most powerful predator to ever live. These aren't random scratches or damage from fossilization. They are precise, intentional wounds that perfectly match the size and spacing of T. rex teeth. One of the most famous specimens resides at the Smithsonian National Museum of Natural History, a triceratops skull with deep punctures along the edge of its frill and nasal horn. What makes this fossil remarkable isn't just the bite marks themselves, but what happened afterward. The bone shows clear signs of healing with new tissue growing around the wounds in patterns that would have taken months to form. This triceratops didn't just survive its encounter with a T-Rex, it lived long enough for its skull to begin repairing itself. Scientists use advanced forensic techniques to distinguish T-Rex bite marks from those of other predators. The spacing between the punctures measures exactly 5.1 inches, matching the tooth spacing of T-Rex. Bite force calculations reveal pressures exceeding 12,800 psi, far beyond anything any other late Cretaceous predator could produce. Only one species had both the tooth size and jaw strength to leave this kind of damage. The location of the bites reveals astonishing details about T. rex's hunting strategy. Most attacks targeted the back of the skull and the neck region suggesting ambush tactics rather than head-on confrontation. CT scanning technology allows researchers to reconstruct the angle of each bite, showing that T. rex often approached from behind or the side to avoid those deadly horns. Modern 3D modeling techniques recreate these ancient attacks with remarkable accuracy. Computer simulations show force vectors and angles of impact, revealing how T. rex positioned itself to inflict maximum damage while minim minimizing its own risk. The bites cluster around key anatomical weak points particularly the joint where the skull connects to the cervical vertebrae. Reconstructed bone tissue models tell an even more astonishing story. Some specimens show evidence of multiple healed wounds, suggesting that repeated encounters may have occurred with the same individual. This recovery process would have required significant time and energy, indicating that Triceratops possessed a strong immune system and exceptional resilience. What paleontologists have uncovered has completely reshaped previous assumptions about these encounters. These bite marks weren't made during scavenging on dead animals. Patterns of healing changes in bone density and the nature of the trauma all point to active hunting attempts on live fighting prey. These were real battles between two of the most formidable animals to ever walk the earth and the herbivore proved to be a formidable, unyielding opponent. While most herbivores relied on speed to escape predators, Triceratops adopted a completely different strategy, turning its entire body into a living fortress built for combat. This wasn't just about size or strength, it was a finely tuned biomechanical system engineered to withstand the blows of the most powerful predator while delivering devastating counterattacks. Its low slung frame created a stable combat platform, maintaining balance even when facing down a charging apex predator at full speed. The mechanical advantage of this compact solid design becomes clear when viewed through the lens of physics. T-Rex stood around 12 feet tall, giving it a high center of gravity that made it more vulnerable to imbalance. Triceratops only eight feet tall at the shoulder maintained perfect stability during confrontations. This height difference actually favored the herbivore. Its deadly horns were positioned at the ideal angle to strike the softer underbelly and lower chest of T-Rex. Its limb structure represents one of nature's most optimized designs. 
Four massive column-like legs distributed the animal's 24,000 pound weight across a broad surface area. The bone density in these limbs exceeded that of modern elephants, forming pillars capable of absorbing tremendous impact forces without breaking. When T-Rex tried to topple a Triceratops, it was essentially trying to flip over a living tank. The three-horned configuration maximized both offense and defense, something no single horned species could match. The two brow horns projected forward like a forward-facing combat pin, capable of piercing T-Rex's hide from multiple angles at once. The shorter nasal horn added facial protection and introduced a third point of attack in close quarters. The massive skull of Triceratops served as both weapon and shield with bone thickness reaching up to six inches at key points on par with modern military vehicle armor. The rigid frill behind the head didn't just guard vital neck arteries from T-Rex's crushing bite, it also acted as a visual threat display, making the animal appear larger and more dangerous during standoffs. Its low center of gravity made Triceratops especially effective at delivering ramming attacks. Once it gained momentum, it became an unstoppable force, able to stay balanced and in control, even during high-speed collisions. The sturdy limbs absorbed impact, while the horns funneled concentrated force into whatever stood in the way. Biomechanical analysis confirms the lethality of these adaptations. Computer models show that a single Triceratops charge could fully penetrate the abdominal cavity of a T-Rex. In physical terms, this herbivore possessed killing power, turning its defensive arsenal into an offensive weapon capable of ending a confrontation in seconds. The abundance of Triceratops skull fossils scattered across North America tells a story of dominance, one that challenges everything we thought we knew about herbivore survival strategies. Walk into any major paleontology museum and you'll see something remarkable. Triceratops skulls are everywhere, from the American Museum of Natural History in New York to the Royal Tyrrell Museum in Canada. These massive bone structures fossilized far more reliably than the rest of the dinosaur skeleton, creating a peculiar pattern of preservation that reveals something extraordinary about this animal. The fossil record presents an intriguing puzzle. Triceratops skulls vastly outnumber their postcranial bones. Most other dinosaur species show the opposite trend, more body bones than skulls. This preservation advantage suggests Triceratops had exceptional survivability, allowing its populations to thrive in environments where other species struggled. The sheer volume of skull fossils indicates they were not rare creatures hiding in remote corners of late Cretaceous North America. They were a dominant presence. And this is where the story becomes truly astonishing. This so-called prey species dominated its ecosystem in a way typically reserved for apex predators. Triceratops made up five out of every six large dinosaurs in their habitat, a level of ecological dominance unmatched by any herbivore in Earth's history, especially in the face of such powerful predators. Recent discoveries of juvenile Triceratops fossils have completely upended previous scientific assumptions. Even before reaching sexual maturity, sometimes when they were only a few feet long, young individuals already displayed horns and frills. The early appearance of these weapons challenges the traditional view that such features were primarily for mating or social signaling. Instead, it points to defense as the primary evolutionary driver from the very beginning. The rapid evolutionary shifts in Ceratopsian skull ornamentation reflect an escalating biological arms race with predators. In just a few million years, horn length increased frill designs um, grew more elaborate and skull thickness rose dramatically. Each generation developed more effective defenses in response to ever more sophisticated attack strategies. The tooth battery system was a key engine of Triceratops' success. With between 432 and 800 teeth arranged into complex grinding surfaces, it could process enormous quantities of tough vegetation. This efficient feeding mechanism provided the energy needed to sustain its large body size and power its defensive arsenal. The combination of specialized weaponry and efficient digestion forged a superior survival strategy in the late Cretaceous ecosystem. While other herbivores relied on speed camouflage or evasion, Triceratops chose direct confrontation as its primary defense. And it worked so well, in fact, that it became the most abundant large animal in its environment, flipping the traditional predator-prey dynamic on its head.
A late afternoon on the Cretaceous Plains, a lone triceratops grazes among towering ferns, unaware that it's being watched. From the forest's edge, a 40-foot Tyrannosaurus rex bursts from the underbrush, charging at nearly 20 miles per hour. Muscles, coil jaws, gape. This is the apex predator's moment to strike, but the Triceratops doesn't panic. It plants its column-like legs and lowers its head, turning its reinforced skull into a biological shield. The brow horns thrust forward, aimed squarely at the oncoming attacker. The bony frill rises, not just for protection, but as a visual warning, this herbivore is ready to fight. T-Rex attacks, trying to circle around a classic tactic to avoid those deadly horns. It lunges toward the back, targeting the neck, where the frill offers no protection. But the Triceratops spins quickly, using its armored skull to absorb the blow and launch a counter-strike. Twelve tons of muscle and bone funnel into a single focused thrust. This wasn't a desperate lunge, it was physics weaponized. The impact carries lethal penetrating force capable of damaging internal organs and causing massive internal bleeding. A direct hit like that is almost certainly fatal. Even a glancing blow could leave the T-Rex wounded or force it to retreat. The T-Rex pulls back injured, whether physically or tactically. It had miscalculated. Triceratops stands its ground gaze, unwavering stance unshaken. The battle isn't over, but the momentum has shifted. Not every encounter ends in victory for the herbivore, but this one reveals a deeper truth. Triceratops was not built to flee. It was built to hold its ground. And when it did, even the most terrifying predator of the Cretaceous had reason to hesitate. This wasn't a one-sided hunt. It was a tactical duel where the hunted could become the hunter in an instant. Every charge was a gamble. Every horn thrust a test of timing and courage. Triceratops didn't survive by luck. It survived by turning defense into a deadly offense. In the fossil record, we find echoes of these ancient battles, healed punctures, shattered horns, chipped teeth. They're remnants of a time when survival meant mastering the art of combat and no creature played the defensive game better than Triceratops. Triceratops stands as the ultimate example of how a prey species didn't just evolve to survive, but to dominate its ecosystem through defensive specialization. This wasn't just adaptation, it was evolutionary mastery that flipped the traditional predator-prey dynamic on its head. These prehistoric battles continue to deepen our understanding of evolutionary strategy and the delicate balance between offense and defense in nature. The next time you think of herbivores as passive victims, remember Triceratops. These weren't gentle giants peacefully grazing on ancient plains. They were combat specialists capable of killing top predators with calculated precision proof that prehistoric ecosystems were far more complex and dynamic than we ever imagined.